Greetings everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing Thursday. So President Joe Biden's first address to Congress just occurred last night. So in today's video, I will be discussing the key takeaways from President Biden's address. I will also be going over the status of the fourth stimulus check. Thank you so much for being here everyone. This Friday, I will be giving away another $75 Amazon gift card. To enter the giveaway, all you'll have to do is subscribe to my channel, share and like this video, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. So President Biden is certainly no stranger to the State of the Union and joint addresses to Congress. President Biden has spent 36 years in the Senate and eight years as Vice President. But last night, he finally delivered his first speech to Congress. So the speech looked different than in years past. President Joe Biden definitely focused on the ongoing crisis. Biden has been president for 100 days now. How do you all think that President Joe Biden is doing so far as president of the United States? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please leave them in the comments section below. While over 1,600 people usually attend a presidential speech to Congress, this year only 200 people were allowed to be there in person. The smaller crowd in the House of Representatives chamber was socially distanced. Attendees were also kept three seats away from the center aisle that President Biden walked down on. President Biden said, Now, after just 100 days, I can report to the nation, America is on the move again. Americans never, ever, ever stay down and always get up. Today, that's what we're doing. America is rising anew, choosing hope over fear, truth over lies, and light over darkness. Last night, President Biden delivered his first address to a joint session of Congress, and today marks his 100th day in office. President Biden is a likable person. Many of us remember serving with him in this chamber. But while the tone of his remarks were understated, the content was anything but. He talked at length about competing with China without mentioning that he wants to cut U.S. defense spending after inflation. Exactly what we cannot do if we want to keep pace. He talked about immigration without taking any responsibility for the border crisis that has his administration packing unaccompanied children into facilities and releasing arrivals into our country. And the president talked about unity and togetherness while reading off a multi-trillion dollar shopping list that was neither designed nor intended to earn bipartisan buy-in. A blueprint for giving Washington even more money and even more power to micromanage American families and build the country's liberal elites want instead of the future Americans want. Think back to the start of this administration. Remember its day one priorities. Axing a pipeline project that would have supported thousands of jobs, freezing the exploration behind America's energy independence, and re-signing the climate agreement that has gotten less emissions reduction out of China, who's inside the deal, than the U.S. achieved on our own outside the deal. The approach has remained equally radical since. Much of Biden's speech focused on what he hopes to do over the next year, including major priorities like his enormous infrastructure bill, education, and child care plans. President Biden could definitely succeed with his $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan. It is possible that the package will be passed with a slim majority in the Senate under the budget reconciliation process. However, Joe Biden does want to secure bipartisan support for that relief measure, especially since he failed to do so with a $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. Biden stated, I like to meet with those who have ideas that are different, that they think they are better. Biden stated in response to Republicans who have proposed their own infrastructure plan. I welcome those ideas, but the rest of the world is not waiting for us. I just want to be clear from my perspective Doing nothing is not an option. On April 22nd, Republicans unveiled a $568 billion infrastructure framework. That was their answer to President Joe Biden's far more expensive $2 trillion package. The newly released Republican framework focuses exclusively on core infrastructure items like roads, 
bridges, broadband, airports, waterways, rails, ports, and public transit. It excludes other big items in Biden's proposal, including funding for electric vehicles, housing, and home care. And during his speech, President Biden called for a once-in-a-generation investment in families and children, making his case for American Families Plan to members of Congress and the American people. In the plan, President Biden calls for universal preschool for three and four-year-olds, as well as two years free community college, a national paid leave program, and $800 billion in tax credit for families and workers. This plan could really help millions of Americans that have slipped into poverty because of this crisis. President Biden also noted his personal connection to education, pointing out his wife, First Lady Jill Biden, who teaches at a community college. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times, he said, quoting his wife. Joe, any country that out-educates us is going to out-compete us. She would be deeply involved in leading this effort. President Biden announced he was tasking Vice President Kamala Harris with leading the push to get his $2.3 trillion infrastructure proposals passed. According to Biden, Harris will face opposition among Republican lawmakers who say that the plan is too expansive. Republicans are also opposed to raising taxes on corporations to pay for it, as the president has suggested. Democratic lawmakers will definitely soon be negotiating with Republican lawmakers. Now, we still have many lawmakers that want to take stimulus payments a step further with monthly installments of as much as $2,000. Two months before the third stimulus package was passed, a group of Democratic lawmakers sent a letter to President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris calling for their support for recurring cash payments in your future economic relief plans. Those lawmakers wrote, The stunning financial crisis for those at the bottom of the income ladder demands massive relief for those who need it the most. Recurring direct payments until the economy recovers will help ensure that people can meet their basic needs and shorten the length of the recession. So there is still a lot of work that needs to be done by our lawmakers. Hopefully we will see an extra boost in Social Security and another round of stimulus checks passed very soon. That is the end of the video everyone. I hope you found this video helpful today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer any questions that you may have. And don't forget to enter the $75 Amazon gift card giveaway by subscribing to my channel, sharing and liking this video, and commenting below. Thank you so much everyone and have a very, very blessed day.